good morning everyone so in the last class we introduced the concept of spanning trees today we are going to see a method to compute the number of spanning trees a graph can have so recall the concept we discussed in the last class we begin with the adjacency matrix so adjacency matrix represents the adjacency relation between every pair of the vertices for a simple conducted graph adjacency matrix is a zero one symmetric matrix in case of loops or multiple edges the entries are greater than 1 then this was again a very important theorem we discussed in the last class that gives us the number of distinct walks of length k between any pair of the vertices we simply need to compute a raised to the power k where a is the adjacency matrix of the given graph so recall that we discuss the number of walks so this represents the number of walks and this represents the length so the number of the walks and this represents u1 to u1 so number of walks of length 2 from u1 to u1 is 5 and therefore we computed a square the next concept is graph laplacian of simple graphs so let g be any simple graphs on n vertices represented as v1 v2 vn then the graph laplacian is a n cross n matrix whose entries are computed as diagonal entries represents the degrees so recall the concept of adjacency matrix from there it's very easy to compute the degree of each of the vertex let's say i need the degree of v1 then i add all the entries in row 1 and similarly all the degrees can be computed so this this graph you can see degree of u1 is 3 so this is u1 with degree 3 and so on so for obtaining the Laplacian, all diagonal entry is this. If two vertices are adjacent, then we mark it minus 1, the entry is minus 1, otherwise the entries are 0. Think over that, that if you have given an adjacency matrix, how do you compute the graph Laplacian? So graph Laplacian is simply D minus A where D is the diagonal matrix where each diagonal entries represents the degree of the corresponding vertex and A is the adjacency matrix. So L is equal to D minus A where D is a diagonal matrix where D J J is degree V J and A is the adjacency matrix. So for the following graph, quickly try to compute the graph Laplacian. It means that first you should mark the diagonal entries. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Labeling is must. So degree of V1 is 2. V2 is again 2. V3 is 3. V4 is 1. Now V1 is adjacent to V2 and V3. So mark them minus 1 then v2 is adjacent to v1 v3 mark them minus 1 v4 is adjacent to all of them v3 and v4 is adjacent to v3 only so this is the required graph Laplacian now once we have the graph Laplacian then there comes a very well known theorem from 1847, 150 years ago, which is known as matrix tree theorem or Kirchhoff's matrix tree theorem. It's such a simple theorem, but the result is so powerful. It gives in a very easy way, gives us the number of the spanning trees. So it says that first compute L, the graph Laplacian then choose any vertex and corresponding to that vertex delete 
so if you choose vj then delete jth row and jth column from l to have a new matrix and then compute the determinant of this matrix that gives you the required number of the spanning trees in the labeled graph g very very interesting and the important result let's quickly try an example so if you see this one then you compute the graph laplacian or let's say you delete v1 so now i have v2 v3 v4 v2 v3 v4 because i deleted the first row and first column so from the previous slide if you delete the first row and first column 2 minus 1 0 so 2 minus 1 0 then we have minus 1 3 minus 1 and then the last row 0 minus 1 1 0 minus 1 1 and if you compute its determinant it comes out to be 3 and recall that we already computed that for the given graph there are 3 spanning trees 3 known isomorphic spanning trees again when we are talking of known isomorphic spanning trees we are talking of the labeled one so you can see that if unlabeled then first and third are isomorphic but as unlabeled because this is 1 2 3 4 and the next one has the different relations which is 2 1 3 4 now using the matrix tree theorem compute the number of spanning trees of k4 and then just as an exercise try to draw all of them so now the laplacian is very easy to write it down because each one has degree 3 and all other entries are minus 1 And now you delete first row, first column, any row, any column. So 3, 3, 3, minus 1, minus 1. Since it's a complete graph, therefore adjacency matrix, all the entries, all known diagonal entries are 1. So in Laplacian, they are minus 1. And then you compute its determinant. It comes out to be 16. So these are the 16 spanning trees of K4. And this leads us to a very important formula, Calais formula, Calais theorem. It says that the number of spanning trees of Kn is n raised to the power n minus 2. So for K4, it is n is 4, so 4 raised to the power 2, which is 16. The proof is algebraic. We can do it using the concept of matrices. I am not going into Marion's detail, but it is very easy to follow. So first, you compute you compute the Laplacian. So all diagonal entries are n minus one, and other entries are minus one. Then you delete first row, first column, and this is the remaining matrix of order n minus one. Now you need to compute its determinant. So for computing the determinant, first you subtract the bottom row from each of the other rows by doing this the diagonal entries becomes n all other entries becomes 0 so when you subtract minus 1 from minus 1 the entries becomes 0 and the last column you subtract n minus 1 and therefore it becomes minus n now you add each of the first n minus 2 columns to the last column so when you add them then one entry is n and all other entries are zero that's why it gives you zero n minus n and now its order is n minus one the diagonal entries they are n minus two diagonal entries because this entry is one all other entries are zero 
and therefore the determinant is n raised to the power n minus 2. Now one more concept is incidence matrix. We are not going to study it a lot. But adjacency matrix talks about the adjacency relation between vertices. Incidence matrix talk about the adjacency relation between a vertex and an edge. So you can see here that u1 is incidenting to e1, e2, e3. Therefore, these entries are 1 and all other entries are 0. So you can write vertices, edges and if any edge is incident to a vertex then the entry is 1 otherwise it is 0. So quickly you can try to do this exercise. So for the following graph compute its incidence matrix. So just one note that when we are computing the adjacency matrix then we are not differentiating between the edges. If B and D are adjacent and if there are two edges we simply note 2 but we are not differentiating between E2 and E3 but in incidence matrix they get distinguished. So this is the advantage incidence matrix has. But we have seen that adjacency matrix has more applications which we have already discussed and we will discuss more in the coming classes. In the next class we will compute, we will introduce the concept of weighted graphs and then we will compute minimum weight spanning tree. Thank you.